want to share with you yeah. and your family, your family. The love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God. With one touch, ministries, we're touching hearts and changing lives. What is that? 
Oh, 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 oh. 
Number one, we have to give God glory because he is holy. Yes. Hallelujah. I need to put it in the chat and say that he is holy. He is holy. If we give him praise and thanksgiving. The Bible says to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise. And number two, we pray for God's will, God's plan, God's purpose, and his desires to be fulfilled on the earth as it is in heaven. Yes. We have to acknowledge him as our source. Uh, but the Bible says, man should not live by bread alone, by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Not only do we depend on natural food every single day, but we got to depend on spiritual food uh -huh. also every single day. Yes. Uh, we also said to number four, ask God for forgiveness. Sometimes in life we have to hold on to the, uh, sometimes in life we hold on to things that hold us back. Yes. And so God has said that during this time, during prayer, you have to pray and ask God to allow you to be able to forgive and as well as forgive and stop holding on to those things. Stop holding on to those grudges. Stop yes. holding on to things that hold us back. A lot of times we say it's the enemy that's holding us back, but a lot of times it's just us. We're holding Ooh, our own on, self on, back. And then number five, uh, we just simply said, uh, uh, we just simply said, Lord, help me. Hallelujah. Yes. Sometimes that's the only thing I need. I just need a little help, God. I don't know how to pray. Nothing else but help me, God. Yes. Just help me, Lord, in this situation. Just help me. Help me. Help me, God. And then at the end, we said, end your prayer with praise Ooh. and worship. Hallelujah. So, the book of Luke, and I know some of you watch me on live, and some of you have your Bibles on your phone, so you don't have to turn to it, but I'm going to read it for you. Uh, so, Luke chapter 18 and verse 1, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. So, if somebody want to put it in there, uh, Luke chapter 18, uh, verse 1. It says, One day Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always, somebody say always, always, always pray and never give up. Come on. Hallelujah. You should always pray and never give up. So a lot of people sometimes, you know, uh, they make you feel like that if you don't, wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning and that you don't uh, you yeah, know, yeah, give, yeah. pray to God and get down on your knees that yeah. you're not actually giving or that you're not actually praying. Uh, yeah, but, the, but Jesus just said that you should always pray and never give up. So I don't care what time you pray, as long as you pray, it could be at 5 o'clock in the morning, it could be 3 o'clock in the afternoon, it could be 12 noon, uh, but you should always pray. Take some time out to pray because this is our spiritual food, part of our spiritual food, part of our spiritual nourishment that we have to have. The Bible says to stir up the gift that's on the inside of you. And how do you begin to stir up the gift on the inside of you is because you begin to pray. Now, me and my wife, we have developed praying all day long. When you say, how can you pray all day long? Well, listen, uh, we learned earlier uh, 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 that something as simple as, Lord, help me, is a form of prayer. Sometimes yeah. I don't have the right words to say. Sometimes I can't even speak in tongues. But sometimes I just say, God, help me. Hey, glory to God. And so, and so because that keeps arising up in my spirit all single day, all day long, that is a form of prayer. Uh, because, you know, the, the, uh, they say, uh, it's not actually the Bible, but they say when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my very soul, this part is in the Bible, my very soul cries out, hallelujah. And so, uh, so this is the reason why that you have to be able to pray, have a prayer life. Woo! Come on, sir. And so, what is prayer? What is prayer? I'm so glad that you asked. Prayer, according to the dictionary, it says, it's a solemn request for help. There it goes again. A solemn request for help or expression of thanks addressed to God 
or an object of worship. And you know we don't worship anybody but God. Uh, but that's just the dictionary version. So now I'm going to give you the S.E. Young translation of what prayer is. And prayer is communication with God. Yes, come on, sir. So I'm the kind of person, because a lot of people believe that, you know, uh, that God don't speak, that God don't talk. That God can't speak to a prophet. That a God can't speak to a woman. Well, I said this. I said if God can speak through a donkey, I'm pretty sure he can speak through a woman. I'm pretty sure that if God spoke through a donkey, that he can help me speak through a man. And so God, it, uh, it's, it's prayer is a form of communication. So if me and my wife, if we are talking, uh, that means that we're communicating. And so if I'm talking to my wife, and if she's ignoring me, that's not communication. Come on, sir. That's it. See, a lot of times when we communicate with God, when we talk to God, we have to pray. You know, uh, as you'll learn later in the, in the scripture, humble ourselves and pray. Uh, we speak to God, but sometimes we have to quiet ourselves to hear back from him. <laughs> Teach him right, sir. See, a lot of times we do, we do in our pleading and asking God to, Lord, help me, Lord, help me. And then you go on about your day. But God has said, that, no, that's not the way that you communicate with me. Ooh. The way that you communicate with me is that you talk, I listen. I talk, you listen. <laughs> that's how prayer is. And when you say, well, God hasn't been saying anything to me lately, that's because maybe because you're not listening. You got to get in the quiet place so that you can hear from God, so you can uh, hear His voice. God is always speaking, but you have to be always listening. You have to communicate with God. You communicate with God through the Holy Spirit. This is the reason why uh, we encourage people to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Sir. In order to get through to get to God, we have to go through Jesus. In order for us to get to Jesus, we got to get to the Holy Spirit. You have to understand that the Holy Spirit lives down on the inside of you. So since the Holy Spirit lives down on the inside of you, that means you have a direct connection with Jesus, our elder brother. We have a connect, direct connection with God the Father Himself. Yes, sir. We can communicate with God on so many different levels. But a lot of times, we're not listening. And a lot of times, we're only praying. <laughs> Y'all ain't gonna like me for this one. But a lot of times, we're praying to show off. Woo! Come only on. If the only time you pray is when you're in front of somebody, you're showing off. If the only time you pray is when somebody at church says, hey, brother so-and-so, hey, sister so-and-so, can you pray? You're showing off. You should, be ha you should have more of a prayer life at home in your closet than you do out in the street. My God. Let me show you something here. We're going back to Jesus' teaching in Matthew chapter 6. And we're going to, I'm going to read verse 5 through 8. And this, again, is the New Living Translation. It says here, uh, when you pray, my, my tablet is trying to mess up on me. That's all right. I'll do this real quick. All right, there we go. It says, uh, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in synagogues or in church in synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth that uh, it is all, the, I tell you the truth that is all the reward they will ever get. Yeah, yeah. That's all, all the reward that they'll ever get. But when you pray, uh -huh. go away by yourself. Yes. Shut the door yes. behind you and pray to the Father in private. When you're, then your father will see everything and will reward you. So a lot of times, I'm going to stop right there, a lot of times we're only going out to the street. We're only praying.
praying when we're around somebody else. We're only showing off in front of people. And so then God said, you already received your reward. Why should I bless you when you already received your reward? Yes, sir. It's already you, 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 you know already you already showing off. You in the middle of the middle of the street, Father. I thank you, Father, and da, 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 and hallelujah and glory to your name. Or you get here to the church and then you want to show how to pray. No, you got to go into your secret place. Go into your home. Find yourself somewhere where you can shut yourself in. I don't care if it's in the bathroom. I don't care if it's actually in the closet. I don't care if it's in your living room. But you have to have a secret place that you go to God so that you can learn how to pray. Hey, listen, it may be in your car. Woo, come on now. Most of the time, that's the, that's the time I get a chance to talk to God the most. I hear God the most. When I get inside my car and I may be driving along, I may be listening to my music, I may be uh, buck, 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 buck. That's how my mom said, buck. That's what speaking in tongues. <laughs> buck, 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 buck. I may be speaking in tongues and just talking to the Father. And then so that God will impress upon my heart something. Whether that's a message, whether that's a word for my wife, whether that's a word for someone else. God speaks to you in wherever your secret place is. Yes, he does. Do you think that my wife can sit here and prophesy to people on uh, people online who they never seen before, and they just she just wait till she get online to pray and ask for me? <laughs> if you think that that's what she do, no, honey. Let me tell you something. I have I had to tell my wife sometimes. Honey, I, 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 stop it. <laughs> Come on, uh, kick me out the room. Come on, no. kick me I, I, out listen, the room. I, first of all, I'm sweet. <laughs> my wife sit there, she be knocking my head with oil and shining it up with head of the Father God blessing me, keep God. Father God lead them, God. Father God, I got family, God. And I'm saying, I'm like, okay, we just hold on. I, I thank you, Lord, that I have a praying wife. Hallelujah. But this is getting a little out of control come here. Come <laughs> but it's all right though because when you see my wife go live on Facebook, she just don't pray right then. Yes, I tell you, Mama. She done already spent about two or three hours in prayer yes, and said, God told me to go live tonight. And so by the time you get the word, yes. you already received the word. Okay, Shut I don't even know why I'm there. Then the Father who sees everything will reward you. When you pray, don't babble on um, as the Gentiles do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again and again. Don't be like them, for your father knows exactly what you need even before you ask him. So me and my, so me and my wife, we were talking about this not too long ago. She asked me a question. She said, uh, I had to tap into the pastor side of you for a minute, uh, husband. Um, so, when I ask God for something, do I have to go back and ask him for it again? I was like, well, technically yes, but no. But I don't think God is the kind of God that wants you to just continue begging him about the same thing all the time. It's just like a nagging child. Can I have a candy? 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 Oh Shut up. No, you can't have a candy. Can I have a candy? Can I have a candy? Okay, yeah, I said you can have a candy, but just wait a minute. Can I have a candy? Can I have a candy? If you don't stop asking me about this darn candy. Yeah, 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 yeah. You preaching good. Ah! Yes. I understand petitioning God, but good. I'm pretty sure some of y'all get on God's nerve. God, I need healing. God, I need deliverance. God, help my mind, help my heart. You've been asking for that same prayer for three, three weeks and four months and five years. You ain't delivered yet? Don't you understand? Oh, I feel preaching. Don't you understand that you serve a God that heals, huh? that you serve a God that delivers, huh? that you serve a God that sets you free? At the moment that you ask, you receive exactly what you ask come for. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You got to have faith, trust, and believe that God is going to do it. So that brings me to my first point. I didn't even, I said all that, didn't even know where I was going with that. But it brings me to my first point. Communication with God is top priority. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee. 
and show you. My God, he said, I will show you. He said, call out unto me. Yes, God. And I will answer thee and show you great and mighty things that you don't even know about. Call to me. He said, I will show you great and mighty things. He said in Matthew 21 and 22, and all things, whatever you shall ask in prayer, believe you shall receive and you will have it. My favorite scripture says, ask and you shall receive. I don't have to keep on asking. I know that God don't mind me asking for things, but I'm talking about there's a difference between asking for something and just constantly begging, begging, begging God for something. When he said, when you ask and you shall receive. Come on, sir. Seek and you shall find. A lot of times we don't like this part because a lot of times God said you can have it, but not you. I'm playing high go seek. You got to find me for it now. You just want God just to bless you. But God said, I need you to find me. I need you to seek me. Yes. While I shall be found. You got to look for me. You got to get on your hands and knees and pray and worship me. You got to seek me. You got to look for me. You got to find. You got to find. You think that the answer is just going to come out of the sky, from out of the clear blue sky, that it's just going to happen. But God has said that you got to seek me. Don't, 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 don't be asking me for stuff all the time. Just lift up your hands and say, God, I love you. God, I worship you. Yes. God, I thank you, Lord, for giving me exactly what you said you were going to give me. You said your word that you'll give me the desires of my heart. Yes. And I thank you, God, that you sent healing. I thank you, God, that you touched my mind. I thank you, God, that you touched my heart. Thank you, God, that you've done it for me. He said, ask and you shall receive. Yes. Seek and you shall find. Knock. Knock. Come on, come on, come on. Knock. And the door shall be open. Yep. <laughs> Sometimes God just opened up some doors for you, and you just look at it. Ooh, that is such a nice door. Come on, come on, come on. Ooh, come it's on. so nice, bright, and shiny in there. Oh, there's a that because God gives you windows of opportunity. Yes. God gave you three open doors for you to walk through, and a lot of times you're afraid to walk through them. I want to start my music career with. Look, I got everything, and it's all lined up. I got my keyboard, I got my, my music stuff, I got my this and my speakers, and got my that. Uh, and, you know, I, okay, that's nice, but uh -huh. what you gonna do with it? Come on, come on. It's just sitting there. Come on. He said, I done, I done made doors available for you. I, I can make you an artist. Come on, come on. God, I want to start my business. I, I want to be able to do hair. Uh, well, I can do hair, but I don't want to go to school for it. Ha, ha, ha. Come on, don't want to put the time in. Don't want to put the time in. God has said, I have made opportunities for you. Doors are open for you. And you just sitting there looking at it like it's pretty. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. When yeah, you yeah. see the door is up, listen, as soon as you see the door cracking, you should be busting it in. So come on, God. I got this. Let's do this. Come on, we can, we got the victory. We're gonna do this. We're gonna make this thing happen. Because God is saying, He's giving you the desires of your heart, but you got to be to move. But you're not moving. That's it, sir. You're staying in the house. Yeah. Doing nothing. Tony your thumbs. Worried about COVID. Worried about your mama. Worried about your brother. Worried about your sister. Worried about everybody else. Uh huh. And then you live in fear. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and bring this out. This ain't nothing in my nose. But I I'm gonna say this real quick. My, my wife said something the other day. He said, You need to quit swimming. <laughs> Come on. Backstroke it. Come on. Come on. Deep diving in it. Come on, Pastor. Swimming in fear. God wants you to do something in your life, but you backstroke it in fear. You deep dive it in fear. You the Bible says this, and again I say unto you, Matthew 18, 
16, 19, and 20. Yeah, I got y'all a whole bunch of scriptures, so make sure you go watch the replay so you get all these scriptures down. Uh, Matthew 18, 19, and 20. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it will be done for them. Uh -huh. For my Father, which Hello. is in heaven, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst. Hallelujah. Come on, sir. Hallelujah. It says in Ecclesiastes 4 and 12, it says a person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. I need you, honey. I got this. So this is there for really quick. See, this is the reason why a lot of times marriages are under attack. This is the reason why that we, a lot of times, the enemy fight against men. Oh, you're playing something. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm going to break that chain. Okay, yes, oh. sir. <laughs> This is the reason why that uh, marriages come under attack yes, a lot of times because it, it, with two, we can fight back to back like this. Yes, sir. We can fight back to back. Glory to God. And the, and the enemy can broadside us. Uh -huh. But the reason why marriage, you got to have Jesus in the center where two or three come are on. gathered together yes, sir. and touching and agreeing yes. that this. Come on, come on. See, once we add Jesus in there, mm -hmm. he's in the middle. Mm -hmm. And then we, we're on each other side. It's hard to break that bond. Uh -huh. You can't break that bond. You can't pull and tug and do everything. Uh -huh. A three-strand cord uh -huh. is not easily broken because you have to get through three of us. Hallelujah. And so God is saying right now in this season that if you are a married couple, that right now you need to know and understand that don't let nothing yes, come in between this right here because you have God in the middle of your situation, in the That's middle it. of your marriage. That's you God. have to have Jesus Ooh, God. right there That's it. by your side. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. A three strand cord is not easily broken. Yes, sir. The cord of three strands is a God's not, is God's not original. Yes. Couples around the world have been using it to boldly demonstrate God's design for marriage. Yes, sir. The cord of three strands symbolizes the, uh, the joining of one man and one woman by God into a marriage relationship. Marriage takes three. Somebody type in the comments, marriage takes three. Yes. It takes you, it takes your spouse, and it takes God. Well, you may say, well, I'm not married. Woo, How can I define myself? Well, first, we're two or three. All right, guys, this is the reason why a lot of times we say you need to find the spiritual buddy. You need to find someone that's either on your level or higher so that you guys can know how to pray together. Know how to seek the face of God together, not allowing that thing to become fleshly. Because a lot of times you get with people and you and things or you hook up with people and it becomes fleshly. And so that's the reason why you have to be able to find someone that you can pair yourself up with to be able to pray uh, together. And you have to also make sure to keep Jesus as the center. His love will continue to bind you together as one throughout your marriage. Yes. So you have to remember that you have to be able to have Jesus at the center of your whole life. I don't care what you're doing, whether it's your job, whether it's your family, you need to be able to have Jesus in the center of your marriage. Yes. Hallelujah. And so my point number two is this. The batteries are on there. Yes. What percentage I'm on? Is that 20 or is that 10? 
It looks like it's 20. All right. But keep it rolling. Yes, sir. All right. Hallelujah. Uh, point number two, and I'm almost at the end anyway. Point number two, now, so we heard of PPE. We all know what PPE is, right? That's the personal protection equipment. And it's, protected, it's, it's protective clothing that you have. Uh, like certain things like clothing. You also have helmets, you have goggles. And we know a lot about PPE now because now we have to wear the face mask. It depends on uh, where you're living at. You have to have that protective wear. Uh, but God is saying, my point number two for you is that he's your PPP. Uh, yes. Prayer-provided protection. Whoa. <laughs> Say God is your prayer provided protection. Yes. So the Bible says in Matthew 26 and verse 41, watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And so this is what I was talking about earlier, is that you know sometimes things become fleshly. If you uh, uh, if you don't allow God to continue to be in the midst of things then uh, your flesh can become weak. Yes, sir. So you have to watch and pray that you do not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing. God, you know I want to do right. Yes. But sometimes my flesh gets weak. Yes. The Bible says this in Psalms 91, 1 through 4. Uh, 1 through 4 uh, it says, those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, yes, my Lord. place of safety. He is my God, and I trust Him, for He will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. Remember, God is your uh, prayer provider protection. He will protect you against every disease. He will cover you yes. with his feathers and he will shelter you with his wings. Yes, sir. His faithfulness, uh, his faithful promises are your armor and protection. So God, uh, so through prayer, prayer is your uh, provided protection. Yes, and so sir. God will protect you. Hallelujah. God will protect your family. God will protect your children. God will protect your marriage. Hallelujah. God will protect your job. That God will protect your life. God will protect your honey. God will protect your money. God will protect your business. God will protect your car. And even God will protect you when you don't have the extended warranty. Hallelujah. God will give you cover. And he will say, this, this continue to pray. Continue to seek my face. Because prayer is your protection. It's your covering. Prayer provides protection you for you in so. this very hour. And so this is the reason why you got to pray. Because it provides protection <laughs> for you. Zechariah 19, uh, sorry, Zechariah 13 and 9 says, I will put this third into the fire. Then go that three again. Then go that three again. I will put a third into the fire and refine them as one refines silver and test them yes. as gold is tested. Yes. Hallelujah. A lot of times, I know that we pray for stuff, but listen, we got to, we also got to go through tests and trials in our life. Hallelujah. And again, he says, they will call upon my name and I will answer them and show them that my people, that I, that I am their God. Yes, yes, yes. James 5 and 14 says, Is anyone among you sick? Let him call upon the elders of the church. Let them pray over them. Anoint them with oil in the name of our Lord. Glory Hallelujah. So prayer provides protection. Woo! Prayer provides protection. Prayer provides so if you sick, the Bible says to call upon the elders of the church. Lay hands and you shall be healed. Hallelujah. And my last point is this, and I'm closing out with this. And I know I can close out now with a battery now. It's all right though. <laughs> it says here, point number three, I want to encourage you to pray the scriptures to extend your prayer life. Whoa, come on. See, a lot of times, a lot of people don't know how to pray. Uh -huh. But if you know that you, if you just pray the scriptures, yeah, 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 yeah. Is that this is going to challenge you uh -huh. to memorize scripture. 
also uh, challenge you to pick up your Bible. Uh-huh. So the Bible says this in 3 John uh, 1, uh, 2, uh, that, beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in good health even as your soul prosper. And so th this is what I'm saying. So when you pray, when you pray the scriptures and you don't know how to pray, you say, God, I believe that you want me to be prosperous and be in good health even as your soul prosper. And so then you can go from there and say, let this mind be in me. There was also in Christ Jesus, Father God, protect my mind, God. Father God, I know I've been going through some things lately, but I'm here to tell you, God, to protect my mind. Let this mind be in me. There was also in Christ Jesus. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for protecting my mind. You see how you begin to pray this way. And so then you can go into no weapon that's formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me, God said that he shall condemn. And so you begin to pray, Father God, I thank you, God, that there is no weapon. And you never said that the weapon might not be formed. But Father God, you said that no weapon that's formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me, Father God, I know I've got some haters. Father God, I know there's some people that's around me that don't just don't like me. But that's all right, though. Even my mother may not this may not like me. But the Bible says, with my mother and my father's perspective, he said he would lift up a standard. So you see how I'm praying the scriptures. I thank you, Lord. And so then, then, uh, okay, well, those are scriptures that you remember. And so you go to number 6 and 26. It says, God. The Lord, the Lord bless you and keep you, and the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you, and the Lord will turn his face towards you and give you peace. And so you're able to say, God, I thank you that you're blessing me right now. I Lord, I thank you that you're keeping me right now. God, I thank you that you're making your face shine on me. God, I thank you, God, for being gracious to me. Lord, turn not your face from me, God. But Father God, give me peace. Give me that peace, God, that surpasses all understanding. Father God, give me, oh God, every single thing that you said you're going to give me, God. For Father God, you said you know the desires of my heart, God. And Father God, I believe that you're doing it. And Father God said, seek you first in your kingdom and everything shall be added unto me, God. So Father God, I thank you, God, for adding, God. Thank you, God, for blessing me. Thank you, God, for keeping me. Thank you, God, let my your face shine upon me. Thank you, God. Now, hallelujah. Psalms 37, 3 and 5 says, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend, uh, befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. Father God, I thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, that I trust you, God. You said, trust in you in all of our, in our ways. Lean not to your own understanding. And I thank you, God, that you are good. And your mercy endure forever. Father God, teach me, God, to delight in your ways. So that I may know you more, God. That I may know you better, God. That, Father God, that you will give me the desires of my heart. And I know the desires of your heart. And, Father God, allow me to be able to commit to your ways, oh God, so that you can act on my behalf. I thank you, God, that you're doing stuff for me. That that's you're, it, that's hallelujah. it. Hallelujah. Woo, come on, Pastor. Lastly, ah. First Peter uh -huh. 2 and 9. I, I know you're all excited, but I'm going to need me a shot track on this one. Yeah. But this says here, First Peter 2 and 9, uh -huh. it says, but you are a chosen uh -huh. generation, uh -huh. a royal uh -huh. priesthood, a uh -huh. holy nation, a, 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 a particular people, yeah. that you may show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness yeah. into his marvelous light. I say, Father God, I thank you, God, 
that I am a chosen person, that Father God, that you have chosen me, that I am a royal priesthood, that Father God, that I know that I'm a holy nation. Father God, I thank you, God, that I can step boldly into your presence. I don't have to worry about, in the name of Jesus, that I have to come scared and that, I, that, that I'm not worthy. But Father God, I thank you, God, that I know that I'm worthy, that I'm a peculiar person. I know that, hey, I may have been strange and things may have funny for me and you know, people didn't like me throughout the years, whatever. That's because I'm a peculiar person, God. I